Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel on the rebuild of Folland XR987. I thought today we'd take a tour of the front cockpit of XR987, uh, starting with this photo, which shows how she would have looked when she came out of the factory in the 1960s. Starting now on the left-hand side of the panel of XR987, you can see a large yellow and black handle. This is the canopy jettison handle. If you pull on this, a series of pulleys will pop the canopy up to about 42 degrees and the airflow will take care of the rest provided you're above about 90 knots. Uh, moving on uh, forward of that uh, handle, we have the uh, thrust lever. You can see there the uh, high pressure cock off position and uh, moving that forward, you then touch the rear button on on the uh, thrust lever Those that ignites the igniters and starts the igniters and the forward button is a push to torque. To the right of that is the undercarriage uh, handle. You can see quite clearly it's undercarriage up and then it says air brake. The uh, landing gear doors do double duty in the net uh, if you pull that handle back to air brake, only the gear doors will open while the wheels will stay in the wheel well. The undercarriage override uh, press button there is actually um, if you actually need an emergency retraction rather than an emergency, emergency extension of the landing gear. A couple of the switches there, fuel boost pump, uh, pressure head, ACC master and the landing light. These two buttons here, quite important for the standby uh, tail trim. That runs a small electric motor on the Hobson unit. This is in the event of a hydraulic failure. Those who have flown the NAT or are familiar with the NAT will know of the mnemonic Stuprec. Well, the T stands for trim. And the idea is, uh, as we come up there past the uh, G meter, um, you can see there the field trim button. The two sectors on the left, there's a hatched sector. That is the ideal sector. And the white sector, the white solid sector, is the safe sector. The idea with the field trim is you drive that white needle there into the white solid sector, and that then gives you control of the aircraft, uh, limited uh, control of the aircraft via the trim. Coming up there, you can see the exhaust gas temperature, engine RPM, and the uh, flap setting with a couple of the uh, placarded speed limits. Just to the left, we have a fuel flow, and uh, the fun one, the airspeed indicator. Just below that is an ILS indicator. Uh, the aircraft would be capable of shooting an ILS approach uh, if ever required. Um, however, that's not really the intention. The uh, intention is really for only VFR flight in the NAT. There's our main uh, flight instrument, the artificial horizon. Interesting um, feature with this, you can see the 30 in black. That would indicate that you are 30 degrees nose down being in the black. If you're 30 degrees nose up, that, that figure would then be in blue. Below that is an HSI, another quite uh, modern navigation instrument. And here we have the uh, altimeter. Just to the right of the altimeter, we have the gear uh, locked down or uh, unlocked uh, lights, and you can switch it from day to night uh, uh, for the illumination. Below that, we have the slipper tanks uh, left and right, and those lights will illuminate when they're empty. Below that is the fuel computer, where you can see there's a few, uh, a few options with the fuel computer. You can do fuel to destination endurance, uh, nautical miles per 10 pounds of gas, and uh, the fuel you'll have remaining at uh, destination, the current fuel burn. Below that, a uh, couple of older uh, navigation uh, instruments, the uh, Airways Marker, and below that, the DME. Yes, there is the uh, intercockpit uh, volume selector switches. And coming across to the left in the middle of the panel now is our Garmin 430. As you can see, the screen is uh, sadly broken and um, that'll be replaced at some stage, uh, probably with a newer unit, maybe a 530 or um, I think it's a 730 now. Uh, the aircraft does need to comply with ADSB requirements in New Zealand, which means that uh, if I want to operate in controlled airspace, and I do, then I need to be ADSB compliant. So uh, we'll get a GPS um, unit to uh, help comply with that. Here in the uh, foreground now is the uh, joystick or control column. Uh, you can see that it's quite clearly molded for uh, the right hand. That's how single seat jets are flown. Uh, right hand on the stick, left hand on the thrust lever. Down under the, uh, on the floor area, you can see we've had uh, some of the panels removed or most of the floor panels removed to check for corrosion. Happily, there's been uh, very little corrosion uh, in the aircraft at all. We've only found one little spot um, in the aircraft and that's been taken care of. Uh, you can see it's a little bit dirty, but once we get it cleaned up, all the cable runs are uh, in good shape. All the piping and hoses are in good shape and uh, we'll get the floor panels back on in, in anticipation of some further testing. Just on the uh, top of the picture there, you can see the heel brace for the uh, rudder pedals. The uh, NAT operates a conventional uh, toe brake uh, system as opposed to some of the other systems it had with a squeezable handle on the joystick and uh, to operate the, the brakes. Um, but this is obviously a much more conventional and uh, easier way of doing the braking. Coming around uh, on the right-hand uh, panel, 
of the uh, cockpit. You can see we have a standby altimeter. Pretty common to have two altimeters in uh, most aircraft uh, as a backup. And coming down, uh, we have our uh, voltmeter. And uh, then below that, we have a um, ammeter. And uh, we have also uh, our oxygen. Uh, how much oxygen we have left in the bottles. Those uh, who have seen a, vi a video previously, you'll see that those bottles are now uh, stored in the nose. Uh, all in all, the cockpit's in uh, pretty good shape. Um, she's quite modern. Uh, as I mentioned in a video previously, she was rewired in the States, and that included uh, some of these more modern, uh, up-to-date uh, instruments, which are just to help with navigation and airspace requirements. This is a photo before we started work on her. As you can see, she's pretty tidy.